I describe myself as a passionate person always trying to stay busy. Beyond just making prosthetics and braces for animals, I'm constantly doing other projects like you'll see that camper in the back, I'm doing a renovation on it. Being able to combine passions of building and ha helping animals is just an awesome thing and I've created my own industry here so it's uh, kind of living the dream. Looks really good. With animals, you know, there's so many different breeds, shapes, sizes, and it's always fun what comes by my desk. It's like, uh, oh, does this lizard need a leg? It's um, always interesting, never boring, and uh, I'm constantly learning. We're gonna make a whole new set and, and hopefully get Chichi to the point where she's running and walking comfortably and just can act like a normal dog again. So today I'm gonna be seeing a couple of patients Either we're casting a patient or we're fitting the device on a patient. The molding process is where they, uh, a patient comes in. I take a fiberglass impression, a negative mold, and what I do is I take that to our lab in the back and I fill that with plaster of Paris and make a positive mold. I actually hand sculpt every single mold. So this is more art than anything, really. I hand sculpt these, get them ready to vacuum form the foams and plastics over and then we finish them up and ship them out or have the patient come in and do the fitting here and adjustments while they wait. So it's great when we can actually see those patients all the way through and it's great that we can build all the devices here as well. The hardest part about this field is that 80% of the time I never see the animal. We ship casting kits all over the world. So I have to take a mold that someone else did, not me personally, which I love to do, and be able to make something that, that works for them. So that's probably the hardest because of that disconnect. This is something that is so uncommon. If he didn't have the braces, his, his legs physically will not support him. I did this humpback camel a few months ago. He was born with all these lax ligaments in his front legs. And just the casts I got back were just these super long, skinny casts. So that was, it was a really fun build for me, and we really helped him out. You could see the before and after was just tremendous. I was able to go to Thailand about three years ago to fit two Asian elephants with prosthetics. They lost their legs due to landmines, so I was you know, kind of versed with helping elephants, but when I went to Africa and I saw Jabu and just how massive he was, he was about six tons, standing in front of me is just, I knew what a undertaking this would be to, to build a brace for an elephant, and it was, it was just, just the coolest experience I've ever, I've ever had. I did something for a bald eagle a few months ago where he was missing his talon, so we had to make kind of a prosthetic talon for him. But with these really tiny ones, I have to custom manufacture every little tiny part, and it can be very tough. Hey, Ed, don't go in the street. I remember another black lab named Ebony, and she had a very high level amputation, meaning most of her leg had been missing, and I never made a prosthesis like that before. It took me about 10 different tries to make something that worked for her, but when I did, it opened up my eyes and I'm able to see a broader array of patients because I made something work for that case and there's thousands of other dogs with similar deformities or amputation levels. So it's, there's been a few of those moments in my career just where I said, wow, I can do this now and now I can help all these animals. A dog needs, needs an amputation and if a vet calls me prior to surgery, I can say, hey, uh, how about doing a, amputation with a prosthesis in mind instead of, instead of doing a full limb amputation, which traditionally they did even with just like a toe fracture, they would take the entire leg off. So that's just what they learned in college. So I go around the country, the world, and I lecture to vets about what we can do. I do something, what's called an immediate post-operative prosthesis. So you call me prior to the amputation, I make a immediate post-op prosthesis, which is put on immediately after the amputation surgery and the dog will wake up on all fours and there's no downtime and that helps to transition into the definitive prosthesis. A lot of times, like say a dog tears his ACL, it's a very common thing and you'll bring your pet to the vet and they'll say, oh, you need surgery right away. And that's just not the case. All right, let's get you walking. A lot of these animals can benefit from a brace or a prosthesis 
and a ligament can heal or at least stabilize to the point where you don't need surgery. So there's things that, again, it's just about awareness. Vets don't know the things that we can do or they're taught a certain way. And if I can kind of teach all these vets and, and uh, caretakers about what we can do here, we don't only just save them money, but we give these animals a longer life and um, just give the types of therapies uh, to animals that we have for us uh, humans here. Fitting that first dog, Charles, with his prosthesis and then going home to my small apartment in Arlington, Virginia and, and, and really saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this business, I'm going to start Animal Ortho Care. And it just kind of clicked. I, I never did anything like that. I was 25 at the time. And it just, I knew I, I was passionate about it and I knew it was going to grow over time, but I, I literally got so much pushback because I was changing the field of veterinary medicine. This had not been there previously, and you know, I went to my first big veterinary convention conference, and I had this booth with prosthetics and orthotic devices, and I remember the line being so long and so many questions from these veterinarians like, how, how do you have the right to do this? What you, would you go to school for? This is not gonna work. I've had to convince veterinarians over time to trust in these different forms of therapies. And we're finally at that point, almost 15 years later, where veterinarians are um, lecturing about orthotics and prosthetics. It's in the textbooks. <laughs> Seeing dogs wag their tails, their eyes kind of sparkle again. That, that moment, maybe they haven't walked in the last couple of years, or they've never walked before in their lives, and you see them just run and get up and you know, those are the moments that I, I kind of live for and that's why I do what I do. You can't, you can't beat that feeling and it's, it's addictive and I just, I know I'll be doing it for the rest of my life. I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd be helping animals all over the world or even helping animals in general. It's not something you think up as a child because it never existed. So if you have that idea, you know, go for it, and if you're passionate about it, go as hard as you can for as long as you can, and you can make a huge difference um, in your life and the life of so many. <laughs> Look at him go! Derek's work on Jabu the Elephant was featured on Animal Planet. His prosthetic devices and braces are affordable. Check out AnimalOrthoCare.com for more.